Python is one of the popular and most recommended programming languages for beginners. Many, many, many tech companies use Python to build a lot of their infrastructures and also using Python as their main programming languages in their tech stack. Companies like Google, or Netflix or Uber or even Instagram highly use Python for various different areas in their products and not to even mention there's so many job opportunities for Python developers. You might watch my previous video which is how to become a backend Python developer. If you haven't watched that video, I would highly 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 recommend to go watch the video today. I do want to go through some of the things that I wish that I know before I'm learning Python. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May and I am a full-time software engineer front-end developer, web developer living in New York City. So in this channel, you're gonna learn a lot about things that is related to how to learn to code, web development, and all things related to tech. So a little bit about my backstory. So I started getting into tech when I landed a job as a data analyst back in 2000, oh god, 2015. And I started to learn Python because that is the next most reasonable progression of my career. And I actually ended up doing a ton of different resources on Python and knowing a lot of things about Python. And I actually ended up becoming a developer because I really like enjoying developing features and building products. Long story short, today I kind of wanted just to go back in time as I was a beginner and wanted to point out a few of the things that I wish that I would know before I jumped into learning Python. So if you're ready with me, let's get started. Tip number one, and that sounds super simple, but it is important, is you gotta learn the difference between front end and back end, and what is the differences between these two. Let's just explain it in a few sentences. So for front end, let's say that you are going through some sort of like web e-commerce website or whatever and the styling and the products that you're seeing on a web e-commerce site those are the front ends those are the informations that are presented to the users who are interacting with that page versus back end is more or less about you know taking that data and going back to the data warehouse or the database and trying to update that data so it's more like something that you don't really see to present to the user whatever that you know from the back end all the informations are communicating through api to talk to the front end and then present it to the user so for front ends most of the times you'll hear programming languages in JavaScript and also with HTML and CSS. For the back end, you will hear a lot about programming languages such as Java, C Sharp, uh, Python, Ruby, or even PHP. Obviously, for Python particularly, is used as a back end language. Tip number two is you gotta know what you're gonna do with Python before you even learning Python. What I mean by that is there are so many different career paths, honestly, in Python. You can completely build a web app backend using Python, or you can get into data analytics or data science, or you can use Python for artificial intelligence or machine learning. It's important for you to really kind of like have a sense of what kind of developers you want to become. It's okay if you're still very blurry about what kind of developers you want to become, but knowing that you are looking in some sort of directions that really is going to help you when you're picking what type of framework that you should be learning in Python and how you should learn that language too. Tip number three is installing Python on your PC or on your Mac. For Python 2, generally it comes in a pre-install on most of the Apple computers. And the truth is you probably will have to install Python 3. That might sound a little overwhelming, especially when you're a beginner, you have no idea how you can do that, but it's honestly not difficult at all. Like literally just Google 
how to install Python 3 and you'll be sure to see a lot of the resources and blogs and tutorials that are presented by a lot of people that teach you step by step how you can install Python 3. In fact, becoming a developer, one of the most valuable skills that I would say is to need to learn how to ask the right question on the internet, aka Google the question. Tip number four is the ideas between Python 2 versus Python 3. And you gotta know the difference between these two. So there's basically two major versions of Python. There's Python 2 and there's Python Python 3. So Python 2 is basically legacy, is the older versions of Python, and obviously Python 3 is the future, it is basically the most updated version in Python as the time that I am recording this video. So Python 2 is still in use by a lot of companies. A lot of companies still using Python 2 because a lot of their infrastructures and a lot of their code bases were built back in the days, which is using a older versions of Python. So when Python 3 came along, it was a huge upgrade in terms of the language that has like a lot of significant changes and makes it just easier to code with Python 3. Now, the new websites and also the new companies, when they just building up from scratch, obviously they are going to use Python 3 because that's the newer versions of Python. And I would say that in the next few years, there's gonna be a lot of companies and you'll see a lot of the trends of companies transitioning from Python 2 to Python 3 and even just rewriting their whole entire code bases. And because everyone is moving to Python 3, I think it's important that we know about this and we should really be prioritizing our energy to learn Python 3. Tip number five is actually understanding what kind of jobs needs a Python developer or needs someone who knows Python. If you are learning to become a Python developer, obviously, if you get hired by Facebook or nowadays it's called Meta, you can earn, you know, around a salary of, I don't know, $150,000 per year minimum, um, just the base salary, right? That's very lucrative. But if becoming a developer isn't your thing, like you don't want to become a developer, but you do want to learn Python just for the sake of you want to learn Python, you also might be benefited from learning programming languages in general. So I'll give you examples. For instance, you can become a data journalist or a scientist or even doctors and product managers some of them are using Python. So Python isn't just limited nowadays to programmers or to anyone that does coding as their full-time job. Like you can learn Python with different career opportunities. Tip number six is you can be a Python developer without knowing everything about Python. And I cannot emphasize that enough that not a lot of developers just knows everything. When you know a language, that means that you know the language, you know how to find resources to help you to learn more about the language. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to learn every single details about that coding language. There are virtually not enough or even one single developer that I would say that knows entirely everything about a programming language. Nada. You only have to know and learn the sections of the language that you need to do with what you're trying to accomplish. Hence, that's why it's so important in the beginning of the videos where I talked about you need to be really aware of what directions that you're going and how Python can really help you to get to where you want to get to. If you have not checked out my videos about how exactly you can be a Python backend developer, so I highly recommend you to check out the video. It helps so many people already. I hope that you stay safe and until next time, I will talk to you soon. Adios.